Well, greetings, everybody. Uh, my name is Marshall Hebert, and I'm the Dean of the School of Computer Science. Uh, on behalf of the Dean of Engineering, Bill Sanders, I would like to welcome you in this beautiful facility, uh, Mill 19. Uh, and to start our program today, I would like to introduce the 10th President of Carnegie Mellon, Farnam Chahanian. Thank you very much, Marshall, for that introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, on behalf of the entire Carnegie Mellon University community, I am delighted uh, to welcome all of you to Mill 19 High Bay, this facility here at Hazelwood Green, as our legislators unveil PA's AV bill, which hopes to cement Pennsylvania's leadership in the safe deployment of autonomous vehicles. A Hazelwood Green, and we were just talking about this with a number of senators uh, and, and um, uh, the secretary, is such a fitting location for today's event, given the historic significance of this development. Um, decades ago, 5,000 workers produced more than 1 million tons of metal per year right here at this site helping to power the economic engines of Pittsburgh and the United States. Now, thanks to the support from the Commonwealth, our local government leaders, and the foundation community, this building, and a number of buildings around it, and this entire 178 acres is being transformed into a hub for the transformative technologies of the future. Today, Hazelwood Green continues to advance the next generation of robotics and advanced manufacturing and expand economic opportunities in Western Pennsylvania and, of course, beyond. Uh, this is just such a terrific backdrop for an event about how we can bring the benefits of advanced technologies to even more Pennsylvanians. At this time, I want to take a moment to extend a very special welcome to our host for this event. Uh, Pennsylvania State Senator Wayne Langerholz and Pennsylvania Secretary of Transportation Yasmin Gramian. Thank you very much for being here and for your leadership. And at today's event is also a, a, a broad cross-section of leaders and innovators who have been committed to exploring the possibilities in autonomous technology. We're joined by STEAM senators from across Pennsylvania. Thank you all for your leadership, for your service, and for your bipartisan commitment to a more uh, prosperous Pennsylvania. I also wish to acknowledge leaders from the business, labor, and civic community who are here with us. You're especially, uh, you have a very special role. You collectively serve as the lifeblood of this evolving industry, and we want to thank you for your commitment and for your support. And finally, I want to acknowledge local elect leader, leaders who are here with us, including Rich Fitzgerald, from whom you'll hear momentarily, the Ag Allegheny Conference Executive. Again, we're delighted to have you here, and thank you for your support. A couple of moments before I turn it over to our, our um, STEAM colleagues and, and guests. Today's event celebrates a long history of innovation that has established the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as the birthplace of AV. The autonomous vehicle industry is truly a Pennsylvania industry, due, no, no, due in no small measure to the host history of collaboration among government, academia, and industry. This collaboration began almost 40 years ago when CMU researchers led by Red Whitaker built a small autonomous vehicle to aid in the cleanup of the reactor number two at Three Mile Island uh, near Harrisburg. Since that time, research and technology has grown exponentially here in Western Pennsylvania, creating an entire industry and thousands of great jobs. And in 2016, thanks to the tremendous leadership of Raj Rajkumar and Stan Caldwell, my colleagues here at Carnegie Mellon, and an award from the, University of, uh, from the U.S. Department of Transportation, we launched Mobility 21 as the National University Transportation Center here at CMU. 
I'm tremendously proud of the many CMU spin-offs or affiliated companies that are leading in this space, including Argo AI, Aurora, Locomotion, Motional, and a number of other, others that are based in this area. By the way, Motional is actually headquartered here in Mill 19, just next door. While this heritage has defined the past century, the past half century, I should say, today we have our eyes focused on the future and specifically what comes next for Pennsylvania's autonomous vehicle industry. Right now, we're in a race to ensure America's leadership in this defining technology. It's estimated that the global market size for the autonomous vehicle industry will reach about $7 trillion by 2050 with the potential to create countless jobs for workers for all education, from all education and skill backgrounds. While the economic impact of AV promises to be extraordinary, it also holds remarkable potential to enhance the quality of life for citizens across the nation and contribute to solving some significant societal challenges. Consider public safety, for example, by combining innovative autonomous vehicle technology and public policy with other innovations in data-driven decision-making, we can help to eliminate traffic accidents which has killed more than 20,000 Americans just in the first half of 2021. That number represents a significant increase in fact in recent years. Investment in AV technology and policy can also help to reduce nation's carbon emission, improve infrastructure maintenance, and help alleviate transportation deserts that serve as barriers to opportunities for rural and urban communities. The list, folks, goes on and on. The, the legislation being unveiled today aims to make all these possibilities real for the nation and more specifically ensure Pennsylvania continues to be the national leader in this next vital frontier of innovation. Once again, welcome to Carnegie Mellon and to Mill 19. I look forward to the next chapter of PA's leadership in the autonomous vehicle industry. At this time, I am delighted to turn the podium over to Senator Wayne Langerholtz, whose leadership as chairman of the PA Senate Transportation Committee has been so critical to this bill. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Senator Langerholtz. Senator Langerholtz. Good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Hanion, for the welcoming remarks and also for allowing us to use this tremendous facility for today's press conference. I'm Wayne Lagerholtz. I'm the senator for the 35th district, which uh, encompasses Cambria, Bedford, Clearfield County. Actually, for the moment, uh, that will be changing here. I'm not sure I'll joke with Rich. We can maybe draw a portion. I don't think there's a plan to draw a portion of this into the 35th or not. It's a little bit of a stretch, but, uh, but uh, you never know. But thank you again. And I'd also like to recognize and thank those in attendance at this truly bipartisanship press conference. Secretary Gramian. Senator Costa, his home district, which he is on the way, uh, he is ironically stuck in traffic, but he will be here uh, shortly, and we, if we have to adjust a little bit, he, you'll hear from him uh, a little bit later. Uh, Senator Ament, Senator Robinson, Senator Stefano, Senator Fontana, Senator Pittman, thank you for being here in attendance. County Exec Rich Fitzgerald, Councilman Corey O'Connor, uh, his district as well. And uh, thank you. I look forward to working with you as you are the future of, of this region and this city, bringing this forward. Thank you for being here in attendance. I toured this facility a little over six months ago. At that time, under a warm summer sun, we met with industry leaders of this emerging technology. We listened, we gathered information. And we had an impressive amount of companies present leaders in this technology, companies like Argo, Aurora, Locomation, Motional, and others, and they're headquartered here. So naturally, one of my first questions was, why here? Why Western Pennsylvania? Why Pittsburgh? Now, I've known for many years, uh, as many of you have that have lived here and work here, that this area is synonymous with a work ethic unmatched in our nation. Was this all that drove companies here? What do we have that sets us apart? Education. 
educational institutions. Carnegie Mellon is the birthplace of self-driving vehicles and an unquestioned, undisputed global leader in this technology. The University of Pittsburgh is all in and moving forward and meeting the needs of this emerging industry. In fact, they have a team of students competing in an autonomous race car challenge at the CES conference in Las Vegas in two days, the world's most influential technology event. So recognizing that companies such as Argo, Aurora, Locomation, Motional, and others were willing to take a gamble on our area, I made it my mission to ensure that they stay here especially in light of a groundbreaking economic Im impact study commissioned by the Regional Industrial Development Corporation and the Greater Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce that showed the Pittsburgh region is one of the top centers for autonomous mobile systems. A global market predicted to exceed $1 trillion by 2026 with an estimated 5,000 jobs and a $10 billion impact for a region that captures 1% of the global market growth. So, how do we accomplish these lofty goals? Well, the short answer is we start today. And we've started many, many months uh, prior to this. But today, we send a message. We send a message to the nation and to the world that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania will be a leader in this emerging billion dollar industry and that our commonwealth is open for business. Now, to get to this point was no easy task. It required a multifaceted approach and a true collaboration across all levels. And let this unveiling toll the bell. The bipartisanship is not dead in our commonwealth. We can agree to disagree, that our differing perspectives are what shape and mold our future, and those views are what make our commonwealth and nation great. Look, I don't agree with certain policy proposals of some of my colleagues here in attendance. It doesn't make them bad people. We all have a job to do. Represent our constituents in a manner befitting respect, dignity, and professionalism. In our many months of work proceeding today, we listen to the industry professionals. F folks, folks across what I will term three major areas. The industry, the policy shapers, and the governmental entities. First, the industry. Folks like Matt Blackburn, Marios Critiotis of Aurora. Liz Fishback of Argo, James Murphy of Locomation, thank you. Thank you for your willingness to listen and your invaluable feedback. Much appreciated. The policy shapers, Tommy Johnson and Nick Ferrichetti of Allegheny Strategies Partners, Chuck Coling of Buchanan Ingersoll, Brian Kennedy of the Pittsburgh Tech Council, thank you for your input and coordination in making events like these happen and putting us in touch with all those that will be impacted. The governmental entities, Secretary Gramian, <clears throat> excuse me, Secretary Gramian, County Exec Rich Fitzgerald, Senator Kim Ward, my pre predecessor and our majority leader, Senator Jay Costa, thank you for helping get this legislation to reality, to a workable, tangible document that can start the legislative journey. And I will rely on you all to get it over the finish line. My bill, Senate Bill 965, is the vehicle. And today we unveil a product, this collaborative, bipartisan effort that will yield massive dividends for our state. This product takes away the burdensome regulation, provides uniformity and clarity that Pennsylvania will be the epicenter of this industry and will foster in a new era of productivity and excitement where science, technology, and government merge into something the likes of which has never been seen. This legislation specifically, one, will amend the law. Currently under existing Pennsylvania law, a licensed driver is required to be seated in the driver's position. It's time to change this to comport in line with industry standards.
This legislation will harness future growth opportunities by authorizing the testing and commercial deployment of HAVs up to level five, the highest level of autonomy. Two, it will incorporate global design standards from the Society of Automated Engineers International, which will ensure the safe design of HAVs. Third, it will integrate an HAV as a motor vehicle for law enforcement purposes. Fourth, it will authorize an HAV to operate with a human driver on board, a human driver in a remote location, or exclusively by the automated driving system for testing or commercial deployment applications. Five, it will define requirements for insurance liability and local governance. And six, very importantly, it will maintain PennDOT's role as the lead Commonwealth agency with continuous evaluation from the highly, autonom highly automated vehicle advisory committee originally established by Act 117 of 2018. Legislation authorizing HAVs is not new. According to the National Conference of State Legislatures, 39 states have passed similar legislation to address a myriad of challenges, from reducing the number of lives lost on our highways to addressing the supply chain crisis, which is experiencing a significant shortage of 80,000 truck drivers nationwide. We dare to dream today. We dare to stay ahead of the curve, to never settle for complacency. We recognize the future and it starts here, it starts now. A future that will not leave Pennsylvania behind, but rather be the benchmark for this industry. Today's unveiling of this legislation takes the seed planted by these companies in good faith and not far from here and nourishes it. I look forward to its growth and the fruit that it shall bear. And I ask you to join me today as we go forward. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to introduce a vital stakeholder and someone that is no stranger to transportation, our esteemed Secretary of Transportation, Desmond Grammy. Thank you, Senator Langeholt. That was wonderful. You covered all areas that I wanted to cover. Really, I appreciate uh, all the recognition of everyone in this room. It's truly an honor to be here. Uh, I want to thank Senator Langeholt, all the senators who are here, thank the business partners, uh, the academic partners, um, the president, Johanian uh, from CMU, uh, the development, the chambers, everyone who's got a role and played a role and continue to play a role in the future in this uh, area. I want to thank everybody to be here. It's really an honor to stand in front of you in this beautiful building, which reminds us of Pittsburgh. Uh, where the Industrial Revolution was uh, created and was the, um, in this, was the birthplace of Industrial Revolution and today is the birthplace of this driverless vehicle, uh, connecting the old history to the history that we're going to make in the future. What we have accomplished so far is a clear example of collaboration between the industries, the administration, the business partners, and the academia. When we all work together, we can get a lot done. Um, in fact, uh, we have an opportunity to make transportation safer, to make transportation cleaner, to make transportation more efficient, and most importantly, to make transportation more accessible for, for the people of Pennsylvania and throughout the state. Uh, when it comes to vehicle automation, PennDOT has been at the forefront of this industry at the national level. We've done a lot and we've actually been in a leadership position for many years. Uh, we started in this business of uh, autonomous vehicle back in 2011. Uh, it was across the administration. Uh, Governor Tom Corbett was in charge, and I remember the first testing happened in the city of Pittsburgh back in 2011 under Secretary Shok. Um, and we've come a long way. Um, PennDOT is actively working with various stakeholders to prepare Pennsylvania roadways for large-scale deployments of AVs for the future. 
it seems futuristic in some ways, but the future is actually here. We need to be proactive. We need to get ahead of this thing. We cannot wait and become reactive anymore. Uh, the industry is moving very fast. Last month, three weeks ago actually, I had a chance to tour uh, four of the companies in Pittsburgh area, and they were graciously sharing a lot of information about their business model, their companies, and why they chose to relocate in Pittsburgh as their headquarters and develop this technology and the work they're doing. The first thing that was explained to me and my team at PennDOT was safety and how they're ensuring with this new uh, technology that the safety is being in place is the first and foremost aspect of every business on the autonomous vehicle. And we need to make sure that we get this word out to the public as we are introducing new ideas, new technology. We need to make sure that the public understands how it works and they're comfortable with enhancing it and using it and leveraging it actually. We have eight companies authorized in, uh, in Pittsburgh and actually in Pennsylvania to test their facilities, their AV facilities, in 56 counties across the state. We've already seen some economic benefits from this industry. Uh, in September, the Pittsburgh Regional Industrial Development Corporation and the Greater Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce found that the city's auto autonomy sector provides over 6,300 jobs. Um, and in addition to that, there is another 8,600 indirect jobs being created by this industry. As Senator Langeholt mentioned, and as uh, the President mentioned, President Johanian, there is additional benefits, economic benefits, that will be created and produced ongoing uh, for many years as a result of advancement of this industry. Um, PennDOT supports it. PennDOT supports this opportunity, and we are laser focused on facilitating industry's growth while considering safety for all public and public users. For example, in 2016, PennDOT assembled uh, the Autonomous uh, Vehicle Policy Task Force, and the government industry and stakeholder collaboration was further formalized through Act 117 of 2018, which established the Highly Automated Vehicle Advisory Committee. And through the work of all the members of the Advisory Committee, we evaluate and we talk and we discuss and we brainstorm a lot of the challenges that this industry is faced, such as the workforce development, such as the communications plan, uh, and many other things that we need to address to be fully ready for transformation and fully leveraging this technology. The committee also reviews AV and connected vehicle issues uh, and makes recommendations for the Commonwealth as well as the citizens. So what's next? Uh, from a technology standpoint, companies are currently following our um, guidance, guidance for testing. And they all need to follow the guidance. They all need to be authorized to actually use the facilities and those counties that I mentioned, 56 counties, for their testings. Um, they submit notices of testing and their safety plan uh, prior to getting on the road so we're aware of where it's happening and how it's happening. Uh, we want to see a demonstrated safety culture that's very important, the safety culture, which we've seen, it's been embedded in all the co uh, companies that we visited, and a high level safety requirements from these companies. Uh, our current law did not envision a world of AVs, obviously, and requires a person in the vehicle while testing happens. Uh, to the, what's the next step? To make progress to the future deployment st uh, stage, we need legislative and policy changes to allow vehicle-only testing. And Senator Langeholt talked about uh, the legislative part, and we are actually working on the policy part as well. Uh, this would create a pathway to the safe deployment of these vehicles, which is the next step. They're ready to move on to the safe de deployments. They need proper policies in place and proper legislation in place to be able to do that. And we want to make sure that we support them. Which brings us to today and Senator Langeholt's legislation. 
We applaud the Senator and our legislative partners for moving us forward. We are confident that through our partnership, we will have an updated state law that keeps safety as its focus while helping this technology involved. I thank everyone here for their past, present, and future collaboration. Together, we will build a safer, more equitable, more efficient transportation system. Thank you for having me today. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Senator Costa. Well, thank you very much, Madam Secretary and, and Senator Langehold. Thank you for the opportunity to come by and say a few words. And let me first say, uh, start off by saying thank you for choosing Mill 19 in this historic site. Um, this, as we know, in this particular site, the RIDC work that's been done here, and they continue to grow, um, that this is an appropriate place for this conversation to take place. I'm very honored to be here today to be able to lend my support to the legislation that's being proposed, an expansion of what needs to be done to ensure that what the Secretary talked about in Senator Langerholt spoke about, and how we need to position Pennsylvania to continue to be a leader in this space. Uh, we have an opportunity to continue to build upon the successes that we've seen here. And when we look at uh, the, the economic impact that the companies in Pittsburgh and, and through this county have here, um, the number of jobs that have been created, I think it's over 6,000 or so. I think, Don, you had a study that came out that talked about that, a half a billion dollars economic impact here and the work that's being done. Um, that's what we have to talk about. And to be we need to put into place the appropriate legal framework to allow this space to, um, to continue to thrive. One of the things that we need to recognize is that we're not alone in this chase, uh, this, in the AV space. Uh, a lot of other states are looking to be able to grab what we have here. We have the talent, we have the educational institutions to be able to support that as they've done, and we need to continue to build the proper framework to be able to do that. So I'm very pleased to be able to work here. As the Secretary mentioned, um, the workforce is going to be an important part Part of this conversation as we go forward uh, it's imperative that we recognize uh, what has caused us to get to this point in time but also how we advance the conversation to include uh, issues with respect to workforce and the future of the workforce that's out there the folks who may may or may not be able to maintain positions and the like that conversation needs to be part of this as well uh, but I'm very honored and happy to be able to stand with Senator Langerholt and my colleagues who are advancing this legislation look forward to its quick uh, movement through his committee the transportation committee which works out pretty well, and onto the Senate floor for further consideration. And thank all the partners who participated to help create this and build this framework. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, a uh, legal framework to allow us to thrive, to continue to thrive in this space. That's our goal, that's our collective goal, and that's what we have to try to achieve because if we don't do it now, we, might, we may find ourselves falling behind other states, and we can't do that, particularly given the resources and the rich assets that we have here in Pittsburgh and Allegheny County. Senator, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate. Thank you, Senator Costa. And I know Senator Costa was running late, and I think if he'd have been in an autonomous vehicle, he'd have been here on time. I think that's how that would have worked. Um, and I, I joked, you know, this is a senator's district that we're at here in Hazelwood, and he's done such a great job. But I know uh, the transportation chairman has been here a number of times, too. He likes being here, and I'm worried that they draw these maps. I'm not sure. Senator's getting a little worried. But, but no, we appreciate the bipartisan support, which is really what you see. Because I think when it really comes down to it, the one thing that we can all agree, depending on which side we are, is about jobs and economic growth. And that's what we're talking about here today. And that's what we're talking about with the legislation, SB 965, uh, that the senators has put forth. Because it really is about uh, growing the jobs and growing the employment chain, which is tremendous potential that we have across all the jobs that are here. I want to thank CMU for what they continue to do, President Johanian. You know, we're here at this, this site that we, we've all learned about over the years how much of America was built here um, with the steel that made, that made uh, this city and made this country. Uh, and then that, that person that was the, the pioneer of that created a university, created an institution, an academic institution called Carnegie Tech, which obviously became Carnegie Mellon University, that's taken us to the next generation. And I also like to say, as Pittsburgh has truly become the robotics capital of the world, in what we're doing here in so many different industries. Oh, having over 100 robotics companies that are here in the Pittsburgh area. If we 
well, 100 years ago, um, when there was a football team and we were awarded a football franchise, we know what they were called. Appropriately so, they were called the Steelers. When we get that next franchise, they're going to be called the Pittsburgh Robots because that's what we are right now. So when that WNBA team comes, I think we'll be, uh, we'll be all set up. Um, but we've got to make sure that we continue to move forward and get this legislation passed. Because as the senator said, 39 other states are poised to have that work, take those jobs, get all that supply chain, get all those components built in their states. We want them built here in Pennsylvania and I say specifically southwestern Pennsylvania, but we want to make sure that we are able to do that. And if we don't have the legislation passed, then some of these companies will have to think about going to California or Minnesota or Arizona or Colorado or any of the other 39 states that have passed this legislation. So we know we're good at making things. We want to make them here. We want all of the technicians to be working here, the people that assemble the components, the people that do the procurement, the inventory, the quality of control, the warehouse and distribution, everything across the employment chain. We want those jobs to be here for our Pittsburghers. And, and why are they here, Senator? You asked before. We're here because we've got great institutions like Carnegie Mellon University who do the technology. We've got a great workforce and a trained workforce that's ready to roll up their sleeves and go to work. We've got facilities like this that are able to turn on a dime and get things ready moving forward. We've got affordability and we've got welcomeability of people that want to come here. And we're going to continue moving forward in a good way. So I want to thank these senators who are here today uh, from, from both sides sides of the aisle working together to make sure that these uh, things will happen. And we know the, the, the benefit will be to the business community. And the next speaker coming up uh, is the president of the Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce, which actually represents more than just the city of Pittsburgh and more than Allegheny County, the entire, the entire 10 county region of southwestern Pennsylvania, and also very supportive and very helpful in this endeavor. I want to introduce Matt Smith. Matt. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you today. And, you know, as been noted a couple of times, we uh, partnered with our good friends at RIDC, and I see Don Smith here with us today and in, in hosting this event uh, this in this facility. Um, and the study itself was really something that we did because we recognized we had significant foundational strengths, but that we needed to point out what those, what the challenges are, what the opportunities are, where the threats are located for this region and for this sector to succeed in the in the Pittsburgh region. I want to note, I'd be remiss if I didn't note that the study was funded by RK Mellon. Um, and it's a perfect example, I think, of the way that we do business in Pittsburgh. We have philanthropic, we have universities, we have industry leaders, economic development leaders coming together to produce a study that we hope will propel both Senator Langerholtz's legislation as well as other investments that are going to be necessary to propel this sector forward. Now, as I said, the purpose of the study was really to examine this sector and there's a lot of good news much of which has been said today there's there's really robust tax revenue there's robust robust job creation occurring right now within the autonomous mobile system sector but what the study pointed out to us was even with the strengths that we have and, and first and foremost CMU was acknowledged in the study as our ace in the hole our ace card that we know we have in the Pittsburgh region but even with those strengths and even with the foundation that we've laid, the study pointed out that our position is not unassailable and that, as Rich said, uh, we are in a competition. We're in a competition for economic development investment, we're in a competition for talent, and we're in a competition for investment at the state and the federal level that we know can transform this region and transform this sector. And so what the study recommended was really a, a series of steps but two of the, the most early near-term steps that were recommended were 
Uh, number one, uh, the regulatory change you see today. Um, and we recognize that this is necessary in order to create that path for robust testing and full deployment of autonomous vehicles in Pennsylvania. And the second big thing was investment, which we've done uh, some work around with advocacy, uh, including with some of the senators up here uh, that you see on that front. But today, we think it's really important to put the full-throated support of the Pittsburgh business community behind this legislation. Because as I said, when other states are, are looking at this sector, they see opportunities to take what we have here right now in Pennsylvania. And when businesses are looking for where to deploy this investment, they're really looking for consistency and transparency in the regulatory environment. And right now in Pennsylvania, and to the credit of the policymakers up here um, on stage who have recognized this fact, we're not where we need to be as a state from a competitive uh, regulatory landscape. And, and this legislation will go a huge way in making us more competitive because as those businesses are looking for deployment of this investment, again, they're going to look for that consistency and transparency in the regulatory environment. So we take this sector uh, very, very seriously at the chamber. You, you need to look no further than the fact that our board chair is uh, Argo co-founder and CEO Brian Selesky. Uh, Matt Blackburn, who was mentioned earlier, is also on the Pittsburgh Chamber Board. And so we know that this sector is core to Pittsburgh's economic future and to the future of our residents' quality of life, as well as the opportunity that we want to provide for the entire region um, and the economic development opportunities in the future. So we're very happy to support this legislation. We look forward to traveling to Harrisburg with uh, our membership, our volunteer board leaders, to make sure that we weigh in directly with key senators and representatives as well as the administration. We appreciate the work that's been done today. And I think it's really important to note that this support, as Senator Langerholt said, is bipartisan. Um, it's the administration its leadership in the Senate coming together around an economic imperative for Western Pennsylvania and for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We're very grateful for your leadership, um, everyone up here uh, on the work that you've done uh, to date. We look forward to joining you to get this legislation across the goal line. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and just by way of concluding, uh, again, thank you all for being here in attendance. This attendance far exceeded my expectations and uh, and I appreciate each and every one of you taking time out of your day to be here and the work is not done let's just let's stress that this is the starting point we're going to continue on the good work that's been done and we're going to keep pushing forward and get this across the finish line and again and as I say as I end many of my speaking engagements if there are any questions, follow up. My door is always open. That is, it events, things like this, or meeting with people that are the in industry professionals. I'm not naive enough to think that I know everything. I do not. I am far from it. And I lean on your expertise and not your knowledge to continue moving this forward and to continue to refine this product and make it workable and make it something that is really uh, a national example. So thank you again for being in attendance. I believe there will be some demonstrations here or, or some... Uh, uh, vehicles that are on display and also we are uh, willing to talk to the press if the, I'll put you all we're all available for any questions to the press after this so again thank you all and have a great day